Okay, hey everybody. Carl Schilling again here with you today. We are going to uh, talk about Module 7. Module 7 is about our um, uh, business vertical, okay? Last we spoke about the family individual market, and we're going to show you how some of the same tools tie into the business market, although there are some there, there are some differences, okay? So it's kind of important, once again, you know, occasionally you know what's going to happen, and I'll tell you, this this can happen, okay? This can happen. It does not change your, your role as specialist. Occasionally, you're going to be in a family individual market, and you're going to run across a person who their work-earn cycle is they own a business, okay? So, yes, you're going to have to uh, transition over and take care of the business as well, okay? Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but it'll happen some of the time. And yes, when you put people in FES, guess what you're doing? You're creating a business owner. So some of the things that you discuss with people are also going to cross over on business. But we're also going to show you where to spend your time. That's if you're in a family individual market and you have a crossover. But we're going to show you if you're a business specialist per se, where you're going to spend your time predominantly, and we're going to give you some differing verticals, which nobody, nobody in our industry is paying any attention to, okay? First of all, our industry is filled with people telling you how to market, who to market to, how to have these wonderful sales concepts. First of all, understand here at Financial um, Concierge University, we have all the sales concepts you need, okay? You need information on split dollar, you need information on buy and sell, how to build one, how to do this, how to do that. We give you all that information. You don't have to worry, okay? You want to know how to approach CE, uh, you want to know how to approach uh, CP, uh, uh, you know, CPAs and all this other stuff, no problem. It's already built in. We can teach you that. In fact, I'll tell you a real quick story. I cut my entire success in this business on, on uh, focusing on CPAs. When I first came into business, we were drilling down in the family market, okay? That was, and, and by the way, a lot of that family market was that good old single needs kind of sale. That's what we were taught. Okay. So, um, I learned slowly, but I learned that there was a whole nother world out there. Okay. And that was the business market. But I told you, I went to LUTC. I learned how to prospect and work with business owners. Okay. So that was great. And then, uh, from there, we were all taught at that point, everybody was chasing doctors. Everybody had some kind of unique way to get into doctors. One one program I worked in briefly with a with a wonderful guy. He had a specialized program to reach out to residents, and we do the tax return for the resident, and we put them in what's called minimum deposit, where they only have to pay four out of the first seven premiums, and the rest was financed for them. So they didn't have much money as a resident, but they were going to have a lot of money when they cross over either into their specialty or whatever it was when they got out of residency. So that minimum deposit with the 50% tax bracket and the financing of premiums put in some really nice cases, okay? So he kind of mastered the medical field. Other people were all chasing doctors and, um, and losing all the time. So lo and behold, uh, I got a doctor finally. Took uh, a couple of months. I finally got a doctor on a fairly large case. It was about a $15,000 premium. And once again, I had lost some cases on doctors where the doctors would go to their CPA, okay? Their CPA would cut me out. And I had numerous times that happened to me. So this particular time, I told the doctor, look, you're very busy. You know, you don't have time for this. Let me go see your CPA, okay? We'll get this all done. We'll, we'll finalize this. Everything will be great. So I walked into the CPA's office. I met the CPA. I sat down with him. I sort of made it intimated to him. He got the sense I wasn't going to back off on this. And I, I think I made it kind of clear to him without saying it that this was going to cost him this client if he wanted to, you know, try to circumvent me and push me out. Okay. So we came to agreement. I got the CPA and within, uh, within two weeks, that CPA referred me five other cases right off the bat. We started working together. I showed him what we did. I showed him how we did it. At that point, I was with Northwestern Mutual, by the way. He had a, had a magnificent policy. And um, uh, within two months with him, he led me to the largest case I had ever written at that point in time. He led me to uh, a case with three foreign nationals together combined that did $105,000 worth of premium. 
Okay, one hundred and five thousand dollars worth of premium in nineteen eighty five. So you go figure what that uh, what that was like. Okay, so I want to share with you from there. I then focused on CPAs. I I, I called CPAs and I I I was the number. I got in the top twenty in Northwestern Mutual. Um, I was in the uh, top three as far as being the uh, the uh, rookie agent of the year and uh, won a lot of awards and all this other stuff. And all that business came from three CPAs. Okay. So uh, did I know how to find CPAs? This and Nobody by that time was doing all that, by the way. Okay. Did I know what CPAs wanted to hear and all the baloney? What I did was I just talked to CPAs. I shared with them what I thought would help their clients. I shared with them how possibly I could help them by bringing other clients and we formed a relationship and that ain't changed. Okay. The thing that has changed is more and more CPAs now get licensed. CPAs now go out and get series sevens and, and, and try to become part of a broker dealer. Okay. Uh, not all, but some, so it, it's changed. Okay. It has changed a little, but if you want to chase CPAs, and do what everybody else is doing and pay one group wants you to pay them $5,000 so they can teach you how to build uh, relationships with CPAs. $5,000. <laughs> Come on. You spend $495 a year with us here and we give you all that education gratis. Okay. Cause we want you to be successful. I don't need you to give up $5,000 so that I could teach you how to do something I'm not doing. That is absolutely ridiculous. That's selling the goose. You know, we've talked about that before, whether someone's selling the goose or they're selling the eggs. If they're selling the goose, you better run away. Because if they're selling the goose, it's ass backwards. There's something not right. Okay? So you don't need to be spending thousands of dollars to learn how to market to do something that you can do with your own common sense. We'll help you every step of the way. So anyway, got off a little on a tangent. Let me get into uh, module seven so we get to talk about uh, the uh, marketplace for you, okay? So in module seven, we want to talk about the business vertical. Uh, module six, we talked about the family, uh, individual market. Um, let's go through. Let's get to module, um, module three, uh, module four. By the way, uh, in your, uh, in your um, teachable you have all the, you have this uh, this um, powerpoints that are that are there constantly, right? Okay, it's it's in, it's with every lesson the powerpoint is attached. Okay, so uh, here we go. Module seven. You want to become a business specialist. Okay, now remember some of this is crossover from the individual family market because occasionally you're going to sit in front of a business owner and their individual family side. Okay, um, and it's the same for those of you who go after the business you cross over the other way because they also have a family individual side, okay? So let's look at the business specialty and I'm going to give you three verticals inside this vertical that nobody in our industry focuses on. And this is worth, this here, if anything was worth $5,000, this would be it, folks, okay? This would be the magical $5,000 thing you'd pay for, okay? All right, the three verticals in this vertical are business brokers, commercial realtors, and public company officers, okay? Just look at that bottom one, public company officers. There is a huge, there's over 11,000 small public companies on what's called the OTC markets, 11,000. Each of them has probably three to four executives in their deal there. So there's about uh, 44,000 of these kind of offices. Now, these are small public companies. You know, if we go to the bigger ones, harder to get into, but you go to the bigger ones, a little more competition, but there's about 15,000 of those, okay, that are on NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, and that kind of thing. But just OTC, these are little areas will show you how you get in with those guys and create an infinite banking plan for them to get equity out of their company, turn it into liquidity, and it's very, very uh, interesting. We uh, recently, one of our financial concierges is a person who deals in the financing to get these guys the money when they have to borrow against their stock, okay? So we've talked uh, uh, at length with him 
And it just so happened he had a life insurance license doing nothing with it. And we have now showed him that there are a myriad of cases sitting there every single time he does something. All right. So here's your services to these three verticals. We've got a relationship with finance agents. Now, you know, that's not a big thing. You don't want to have to spend all your time learning everything there because the finance agent people do it on their own. Okay. So you get paid a little bit. It, 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 your cash register rings. So you can use that as a door opener. Okay. You got FES because when you open the door with a finance agent, you're going to come to find out that a lot of their plans require at least minimally a 660, 670, 680, or 700. And you're going to find people that got 620, 600, 580. And those people need to be uh, counseled and helped on, hey, we can help you get back in that pipeline. You might as well stop chasing this money. Why not take three months, six months, nine months to get this credit score up? And then we come right back and can plug you right into the finance agent portal and get the money you really want for your business. Or we can show you other ways to get money for your business because there may be some hidden equity in your business that we can show you how to liquidate, get out, and get into life insurance that doesn't require a credit score. Okay? So, life planning, once again, that's the infinite banking, and the retireless selling system is the same thing. Many of these people have 401ks, IRAs, and all that good stuff, right? So, let's take a peek at the, bus at the business broker, first of all. How would you be valuable to a business broker? Well, uh, three years ago, I met a business broker here in, uh, in the uh, Central Florida area, great guy. I had a real estate license, so I hung it over there and then did a little work in business brokerage, uh, which, by the way, we still have that kind of relationship, and we can do things in the business brokerage field. That's a whole other story. Anyway, I showed him that year um, how to increase um, – uh, by $120,000 in revenue because that was all life insurance sales. $120,000 in premium this gentleman did um, for uh, deals that were sitting right in front of him that he had no idea they were sitting there. Now, most business brokers are the same as him. He was a very successful business broker making you know good money. I, I, I think he's making close to uh, $400,000 a year, give or take, on business brokerage, but he was leaving all of this um, life insurance business on the table. And nobody was doing it, okay? So uh, most of the business brokers have no idea it's there. We're not asking them to become licensed. You can do it yourself for them. But in case they want to get licensed or someone in their office gets licensed, it's a great thing because you just plug them in and you just show them uh, how to get these deals done and, and then you step away, okay? And you have them in your hierarchy. So you go on to deal with them. Um, so the business broker, when you approach them, I think the best way is, you know, hey, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, hey, Mr. Business Broker. <coughs> it seems to me that we are in the same kind of prospecting business. You're focusing on finding businesses every day and you're speaking to business owners and you're trying to find out if they want to sell. I'm speaking to business brokers. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm speaking to businesses every day. I'm speaking to business owners about getting financing and getting uh, money for their business. Uh, and it could be very easy for me to add a question about are they considering selling or what they're considering doing in the future. So I think we can help one another. Okay. I would love to spend a little time, maybe go to lunch and share with you how I can create another revenue stream on a lot of the uh, deals that you're already doing. And at the same time, I can bring more deals to you because I'll be prospecting the same kind of people you are. So in essence, we're doubling our prospecting efforts because you got a guy on the phone like me. Plus, you got people in your office who are on the phone, so I'm speaking to uh, many other businesses that you are not at that point in time, and I can help, okay? So that is your way in the door with a business broker, which no one's paying attention to, and believe me, every single time a business is sold, there's a life insurance deal on one side or even both sides of the table, and there's also bigger deals on both sides of the table because there could be 401ks involved, there could be... Um, IRAs involved. There could be all kinds of things involved in the sale of that business and, and the purchase of that business. Okay. So um, there could be multiple life insurance contracts, lots of premium. Now, commercial realtors. What happens with commercial realtors? Well, commercial realtors happen to deal in uh, large, large uh, commercial real estate deals. These people who they deal with are people who have. Um, a huge amount of uh, capital, oftentimes uh, tied up illiquid, and capital tied up into different commercial projects, but these are men and women who have 
great financial need. The commercial realtor is not too much concerned about that. Okay. However, the commercial realtor has the opportunity to open the door into that person and create more revenue for the commercial realtor because some of these guys wait two years for a deal. I don't know if you know it, how hard it is to be a commercial real estate professional, but you're going to starve for a couple of years. Okay. So it takes a huge amount of time to build a commercial real estate book of any meaning. So these people basically work for nothing for several years. So they are in a format of somehow financing themselves. So again, FES is a great opportunity for a commercial real estate person to be making some money while they're trying to uh, elephant hunt. Because commercial realtors are elephant hunting. It's what they're doing, okay? They don't rabbit hunt. They're not killing any rabbits, okay? They're killing elephants. They are hunting elephants. So uh, it's a tough life. So again, you have things you can offer to a commercial realtor. And you have ways. Now, don't go in there and try to get them to just open their book of business for you because that's not, that's not helpful. You have to offer them something that they don't have right now. You have to offer them something that you can help them with, okay? You know, don't get involved in all of this uh, crisscross lead uh, nonsense about, oh, I got leads for you, you got leads for me, because we all know mind the expression is bullshit. Because there's one person on the equation that doesn't have half what the other person has, and they got nothing to offer. And all they're doing is trying to get that other person, oh, you know, like, that's how people work with CPAs. Hey, Mr. CPA, help me with all, I can help you with all your clients. Baloney, bullshit. Uh, you know, I built my clients, why do I need you? Okay, so remember, you have to offer value to them before you can ask for value back from them, okay? Now, the PubCo offices are very simple. They are, there is a huge amount of infinite banking plans sitting with all of these PubCo offices. They all own a huge amount of stock. Most of their, uh, most of their uh, wealth is in paper equity, especially the penny stock guys. It's all paper equity. I know a good friend of mine in Atlanta. He was worth $11 million one day, and five days later, he was worth nothing. Okay, he went from 11 million to absolutely nothing. Okay, a pump and a dump scam, unfortunately uh, for him, wasn't his company, but he had 11 million in equity turned into Zippo. All right, so these guys and gals have a lot of paper equity that's not liquid. If you are a public officer, a public company officer, and you own more than, I think it's about 8% of the company, you have to report, and that reporting is a, is a legal filing every single year where you report how much of the company you own, okay? Now, if you sell any of that stock across the board or any transaction like that, selling it, it will show up in the report, and people don't like to see public officers sell shares in their own company. They should be accumulating shares if they're really doing something valuable and worthwhile. So, uh, but here's the thing public company officers can, uh, uh, they can uh, leverage their, some of their shares uh, through people like I mentioned to you at Sycamore Capital, you know, Scott Sanchez, who's on with us, and Scott can leverage that money, doesn't show up in any of the reports, and they've just borrowed and leveraged against their stock. They've collateralized some of their stock. They've taken equity out of their uh, um, uh, company. They've liquid, liquefied, and they, it, by liquidating some of that for them, they've mitigated the risk that they have of going from $11 million worth one day to nothing the next day. So they now put that into life insurance, create a bank, and look what they've got. So if the company does go wim, bam, shebang, and it blows up on them, they got 25, 30, 40% of their equity out before the fire. And guess who helped do that? you, the financial concierge. So there is the business, uh, uh, some of that. Now, we uh, talked uh, again here about the business brokers. I went over that at length. So, you know, look, they're prospecting businesses. They have life cases they're unaware of. You provide them prospecting help. You provide them an additional source of revenue, and you provide them with an increased lifetime value of a client. That's what you provide, okay? So um, if you're prospecting businesses, um, just look. If they're doing it alone, uh, they've got a few referrals. Their sales could be worth about $300,000 like the one I told you about. 
and their um, their life insurance, as you notice, there is uh, zero. But it, with you, they could have many, many referrals. Okay, um, sales could go up right there, twenty five percent, and and because of the life insurance revenue that you brought to the table that they didn't even know existed. Okay, so you can see that's about a hundred thousand dollars worth of premium and life insurance just working with this one uh, business broker. Okay, commercial real estate again. They're prospecting large commercial property owners. They have a lot of life cases they're unaware of. You can help pro with prospecting. You can create additional uh, source of revenue. You can help with finance sources. They have them, but again, they, they could use some more. Why not? You can help increase the lifetime value of their client. So financing, prospect referrals, and life cases. Okay, pub co-officers are, to me, one of the hottest places that you could work in. I'm telling you, there's about 11,000 of them. We can get the list for you. You can call these people. You can be the only person speaking to them about something that uh, nobody else is even aware of, okay? So no life agents prospect them presently. They just don't. There's no, I'd be shocked if I found a life. No, I found Scott Sanchez, got a life license. He's in the business. He's with these people every single day, and he's not prospecting them. He was amazed, and he has a life license, Okay. So again, there's no life agents. You're in a field by yourself. They have brokers who control their stock portfolios. They have stock jocks that control their stock portfolios. They're not going to tell them about life insurance. They don't want money to come out of the stock portfolios, okay? So they have these stock portfolios totally, for the most part, illiquid because they can't possibly sell it, okay? So their stock is equity in their company, but they can leverage that stock and they can use life insurance for multiple purposes. Key man, stock bonus plan, split dollar, corporately owned life insurance, infinite banking, retirement, and self-financing. All of those are ways for you to get in and sell a large life case. So Pubco Office is a pretty good deal, folks, all right? Now, module eight, we are going to talk about uh, Medicare, the senior market. So again, let's roll this all back. If you're going to be a specialist and you really are going to spend your time properly and you really want to do what you need to do, guess what you're going to do? You are going to spend time in areas where other people are not. I mean, if you were panning for gold and gold mining and you had a chance to go to a source of gold that nobody knew about yet, or you could pan with everybody else in an area where everyone heard there was gold, where would you be panning? So, Pan for gold with business brokers. Pan for gold with commercial realtors. Pan for gold with pub co-officers because guess what? There's nobody panning there. We know there's gold there. I'm telling you there's gold there, okay? You don't even have to take my word for it. There are life plans sitting there in abundance, okay? So that is where you need to prospect. And believe me, folks, if anything was worth $5,000, this one lesson is worth $5,000, okay? I'm not going to ask you to pay it to me, but it's worth it. It's worth it because I promise you, and you can call me and say, Carl, I've heard that before. I knew all about that. Good. God bless you. Please call me if that's the case. Tell me, Carl, you didn't tell me anything I didn't know. I knew that. The guys that want to charge me $5,000 to work with CPAs, they knew it. They told me that, okay? My, uh, my IMO, my FMO, they knew it. They taught me that. They showed me how to prospect business brokers. They showed me how to prospect commercial realtors. They showed me how to go into public companies, where to find them, how to speak to them. They showed me all of that. Call me if that's the facts, okay? <laughs> but I'm sorry. I don't want to be nasty, but that is just not the facts, okay? So hopefully, this is an eye-opener for those of you who want to work the business market, okay? This is where the acres of diamonds exist, okay? Go after these acres of diamonds. You will be prospecting them all alone. Of course, our financial concierges will be prospecting them, so it won't be all alone. So depending on how many financial concierges we have running around, we'll be doing it, but that's fine. That's fine. There's plenty to go around. There's a huge, abundant source out there. Uh, you know, you can look it up yourself. Google how many business brokers there are in the United States, how many commercial realtors exist. Okay, do a little research and Google the pubco companies, all right? I'll get you the list. You call me and say, Carl, I want that list. I'll get you the list. Now, you have to do a little work, 
I'll show you how to find the numbers and how to call them. I'll give you a script. I'll show you what to say to them, okay? But uh, believe me, there's, as, we, as we count today, there's 11,000 of them. That doesn't include, by the way, the uh, Canadian uh, over-the-counter markets because you can speak to Canadians, by the way. You do know you can sell a foreign national, okay? So, you know, you can have uh, Canadian business. So there's another 15,000 or so of these companies sitting around in a Canadian exchange. All right, the small Toronto exchange, the small Vancouver exchange. There are tons of these opportunities. Some will, some won't, some do, some don't. Don't get me wrong. You know, it's like baseball. You're going to fail seven out of 10 times. No problem. But for each success, you're going to find yourself a 20, 30, 50, sometimes $100,000 premium sitting there. Okay, because these people have a lot, a lot of paper equity. They got a lot of paper wealth. Okay, they would love to see some of that paper wealth turn into actual dollars. So again, I uh, hope this was an eye opener for you. Uh, I thank you for your time. And uh, next module eight, we're going to talk about the senior market. Okay, so you have a wonderful day. As usual, this is totally interactive. You can call me direct, right? You can email me. You can do whatever you uh, need to do. And I look forward to speaking to you. Anybody's got questions on this, please come uh, speak with me. Thanks. Have a wonderful day.